If I learned anything this week, I learned that, say, they uh, recast me next year on this channel. Apparently, it's not a big deal and it's nothing to be concerned about. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are almost through the month of September, rolling up towards the end of Sci-Fi September, headed towards spooky season, a time of year I love. But lots of things going on to get there. We did dodge somehow. Um, the, the virus that shall not be named. I was actually lucky enough to dodge it, but uh, you guys don't want to hear about that. You guys want to hear about something fun, right? Let's talk about some books. Let's talk about what am I reading now, guys. I finish this. <laughs> I thought, look at this big boy. I thought, okay, uh, if this goes about the pace that Berserk did, I can finish this probably, you know, by the time spooky season begins in October. I finished it in a day and a half, basically. And it was one of those things I thought because it was a big old beefy boy that was going to take a while. But, oh my God, this thing reads super, super quick. And uh, I can see now why people told me they were reading this in one sitting. So it's my first experience with Junji Ito. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's not going to be the last because it's really good. I hope this isn't that case where I started with his best because I've actually heard a lot of his standalone horror like short stories are his best work. But I don't know. It really just depends on who you ask. But uh, this every bit met the hype. And uh, I will, I've will. i had some people ask me, hey, what, how would you feel about it for people that are new to horror? Probably not. <laughs> it's, it's uh, for lack of a better phrase, you guys, uh, earmuffs for young listeners, it's real fucked up. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, it takes the body horror... Uh, of Lovecraft and cranks it to 11 with a little bit of Clive Barker on top. It is super, super freaky. And this guy, uh, I don't know if it's him or if it's the publisher that did a great job with it, master of the page turn. And that you, he will do this thing where you will see the characters like seeing something from their point of view and they're like, and you have to turn the page to see what it is that they're looking at. Just perfectly paced. And this, it did it more than once in this one. So, uh, very excited. I might actually do a full review for this one. Because, uh, yeah, lots of stuff to talk about. And uh, I'm very excited that I liked it. Because I already have, like, three other collections by Junji Ito. But, um... As far as this goes, one for one, the hype has been met. Uh, yeah, this is apparently the, the scariest guy in Japan, you know, that, that apparently loves cats. And uh, apparently he draws creepy cats, too. But uh, we'll find out more as we go along. I didn't really re read very much Needful Things this week, uh, kind of in the same place I was at last week. I was working on other books or just, uh, you know, doing other stuff. Kids in both Little League and Boy Scouts right now. And uh, that kind of took my evenings and uh, work. Well, you know, work is work. So I haven't really got to do as much reading this week. So I'm glad we got a good head start on sci-fi september so i didn't get real far into that and then my last sci-fi september book is of course dune and uh, about about two-thirds through that kind of taking it slow this go around because you know uh i can do that uh <laughs> it's one of those things where guys i'm just i'm taking it easy because i want to make sure like always i never try to read dune in like two days i've never been that guy i like to take it slow let it all soak in because uh that's my thing right that is my my book so I'm enjoying my time on Arrakis about as much as you can, you know, without a still suit. But uh, a lot, lots of fun talk on the Discord, people reading it the first time. It's fun seeing their reactions. It has been overwhelmingly positive, and that, of course, makes me very, very happy to see this many people discovering Doom for the first time and enjoying it. Because, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people, I expect, to, I expect a lot more people not to like it on the first read than like it. So this many people like it on the first read. Those people are already starting Messiah. They liked it so much. So uh, very exciting times. And the, this won't be the last time that I mentioned Dune on this episode, most likely, because there are other things going on with Dune. Now, what am I going to read now? Obviously, I'll finish Dune up this week because on the first, guys, we start back on Malazan. And God, these books do not get smaller. Do they? Good grief. That's it's bigger than my coffee cup. It's it's insane. Um, you know, I, I, it's kind of weird that I have like this spooky season thing where I'm planning on reading five other books besides this. Uh, the only reason I've kind of guesstimated that is because uh, I didn't feel like Midnight Tides. Which Midnight Tides was probably about a hundred, hundred fifty. I, I, I don't know, a couple hundred pages. But when you're talking Malazan, does a couple hundred pages m mean much? Uh, I feel like I went through that one super quick. I finished that in nine days with. 
a Stephen King book separating that, you know, a new Stephen King book. So basically it took me about a week to read that. While most of these have taken me about three weeks. Everybody tells me this is the fastest paced one. Uh, you know, most of the cast you've already been introduced to at this point. This is where the series officially begins, you guys. So uh, we're going to find out if that's true or not. But on the first, starting that on the first, like I said, I already did Uzumaki. So that's that's crossed off the list or whatever. And my first uh, spooky season read in October will be The Girl Next Door which everyone on the Discord last night was trying to talk me out of because apparently it's just so, so disturbing. Now, uh, I, I like disturbing guys. I mean, that's my brand. What, I, what I've always said about horror is that, uh, you know, I, I feel like at a certain age, it can't really scare you anymore. And I feel like the best way to do horror is to make you uncomfortable. And apparently this will make you super uncomfortable because he's apparently very, very descriptive. Uh, now, it's uh, one of those things that is very much based on a true story. So, this all really happened. It's just actually described very, very uh, in detail. So uh, that, that that's if that makes it uh, harder to read, I guess I'm going to find out. But I, I've heard about this for quite some time now. And the most effed up thing about this is uh, the culprit that, that did the horrible atrocities in this, in this story, I do know that she actually got off on parole. In, in the mid 80s so how about that huh uh, what a happy happy ending uh hopefully that didn't spoil it for you i don't know i, I don't think that's really a spoiler when it's based on a true story can it really be a spoiler if you know the history at all but uh, i'm gonna dip into that if uh, if i finish that really quick uh i, I doubt it guys next week I, I don't think i'm going to be reading just you know after next week uh just malazan i think for the first week of october but you know if i decide to counterbalance i'll throw that one in there and then move on to heart shaped box by joe hill that's the one that i have scheduled after girl next door but uh since i finished uzumaki so fast i, I guess uh, that was all the manga that i had planned for october so i guess i'll get back into berserk i know a lot of people are anxiously waiting for me to do that next uh ne next review of the next arc of berserk this one is very very long and i still have several volumes to go but you, you know how it goes with berserk you get into that mode and you're gonna you're gonna sit down you're gonna read a volume every time you start one basically so uh, I, I don't imagine it'll be that much longer uh november at the latest i think i'll be reviewing that one on the channel so uh we'll see we'll see how things go in october like i said i'm gonna have kind of my hands full with all the spooky season stuff and i'm very very excited about that let's go ahead and talk about this uh some things that happened this week on the channel I did do my review. I did three reviews this week. So all the, you don't do reviews. There's one guy on Brian Lee Durfee's channel who's just like carrying on that I don't do reviews on this channel. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, I did three reviews this week. I did one for Caliban's War. That is book two of The Expanse. That was part of the Orbit Books reread that they're doing for the lead up to the ninth and final book in that series. And it just made me anxious to get back into that series next year. Because that's as far as I've read is book number two. And I plan on getting back into that this year for Sci-Fi September. And then that Malazan ch schedule change, it just kind of just blew away everything I had planned. So I Expanse is one of those I had to move until next year. But uh, yeah, I'm very much interested in continuing with that series because uh, it is two for two for me up to this point and if uh, the, the television show is any indication i'm gonna love the books just as much as i have I've, the first two books i've been like i can see the difference between the show and the books and i like both you know so uh i, I think that uh they, they keep the main core of the story alive i think so uh yeah, i like what everything i've seen on the show so far so i'm sure i'm gonna like the books as i continue on uh then i reviewed maybe a top 10 book all time for myself this is of course was jurassic park when you talk about my favorite book from my second favorite author of all time, calling it a top 10 book of all time probably makes a lot of sense, right? Well, Jurassic Park is a book that uh, I just I was blown away on this reread about just how great it was. I think I might like it even more now. I was afraid it was going to be like a nostalgia thing. And I was going to read it like, oh, this has got a lot of problems. No, man, it's, it's every bit as great as it was back then. And uh, I recommend it to everybody. I think anyone can like that book. And I couldn't have, I didn't have enough to say about it. You know, I haven't really been doing the, uh, the, the short introductions for Michael Crichton books except Andromeda Strain. Because I realize the audience is kind of small for that. It doesn't justify, you know, spending the two, three, sometimes four hours it takes to make the, you know, a minute and a half intro. But uh, for Jurassic Park, I was like, this is a book I love death. If any of my Crichton stuff is going to get watched, it's going to be that one. So uh, I went ahead and did it for that. And just, man, that music's so good, ain't it? I, I love it to death. And the fact that I was able to, to get with a, another content creator that made like a... Uh, uh, a horror version of the Jurassic Park theme, and of course the uh, the royalty-free version 
of a uh, of the Jurassic Park theme because it was very important to me to keep that music, even though it was about the book. That music, I, I can't think you can. I don't think you can separate that music from that story now because of that movie. Because John Williams is a wizard, and we all owe him a debt of gratitude. Uh, my third review was for Recursion by Blake Crouch, and this is the one where I went ahead, guys, and I bent the knee and I declared him the next Michael Crichton because he's two for two now, and I just feel like his style is everything that I've been missing since Crichton left us in 2008. So uh, I'm very, very happy with uh, the both Blake Crouch books I've read. I'm going ahead and moving forward. Wayward Pines probably sometime this fall if I find time. I've looked at my schedule. November, December are looking kind of light, so I think I can fit those in because they are short reads. They don't look like they're that long at all. Each one of them are shorter than both Recursion and Dark Matter. And if they are every bit the page turners that these first two books I've read of his, and I have no reason to believe that they won't be, then I think for sure we're going to go ahead and get the Wayward Pines in there. Uh, I really don't know what to expect from what I've kind of been sold. It looks almost like a more thriller version of Twin Peaks. And that's something that sounds amazing to me. Probably won't be as quirky as Twin Peaks, but, you know, just an odd town, a town full of oddballs under a, a very thriller kind of situation. So don't know what to expect, but I am looking forward to it because I'm at this point, I'm starting to think Blake Crouch is going to be automatic for me. And I'll be buying everything new that he makes going forward. For sure. Then, of course, I've talked about Spooky Season a lot. I did go ahead and unveil my plans for Spooky Season. Everything I plan to read that month. A few videos I've got in mind and things like that. Some uh, some optional videos depending on how horror stuff does this year. Because, like I said, I know last year the horror stuff really... You know, but uh, it seems like there are... Uh, some more people here this year that are more interested in horror than there were at this time last year. So uh, I'm willing to give it a go, guys. I'm never going to stop talking about horror because I do love the genre quite a bit. But I wanted to make sure I started talking about more horror than just Stephen King, you know. So uh, that's why I tried to branch out with some of those. And some of the things I picked to read are stuff that's been recommended, stuff I've wanted to read for a while. And then some of those reviews is just, uh, you know, some books that I really liked in the past. I've just, I've just never reviewed, like, you know, like I Am Legend and maybe Jaws. You know, things like that that I've just never gotten around to reviewing or knows for Ratu, which, uh, like I brought up in that video, was the last book I read before I started this channel. You know, uh, right when I started Eye of the World was when this channel got started, you know, not by design. You know, it just kind of happened that way. But uh, it's kind of fun thinking about taking the channel back to zero and reviewing uh, Nosferatu. So uh, a lot of fun there. And uh, a thing you guys might know, hey, uh, I do love Dune. You know this, right? Well, this wasn't on my channel. But uh, I, this was on Johanna's channel, and uh, she is an awesome, awesome booktuber, guys. I'm going to link her video here. I'm going to add a link to her channel in the description below. Uh, she invited me on, like a lot of content creators have done uh, this month, and they, are, they want me to come on and talk Dune with them. And uh, there is nothing I like more than to come on other people's channel because I don't have to edit the video, right? Uh, so I was, it was a great, great time. She also had Philip on there and of course, Sarah Reads. Again, I'll link all these channels below. You guys, you should be subscribed to these channels. I don't know why you aren't, but uh, if just in case you aren't, I'm going to link them below because they're all great people and it was a great discussion. I think the first third, we do kind of like a why you should read kind of thing without any spoilers and then like the final two thirds of the video, we go all in on spoilers. So make sure you've read the book first. Uh, if you want to watch it without reading it, uh, I mean, I guess you can if you don't plan to read it. I don't know if a lot of it will make sense to you guys because we don't break it down or anything. But like, hey, then this, this, and this happens. We just kind of talk about everything that we love and everything that, uh, you know, that really surprised some people in that conversation. So check out that conversation if you get a chance because uh, I think uh, the feedback I got was it was almost as fun, much fun to listen to as it was for me to be a part of it. So good people all around. And I'm excited that everyone in that conversation was quite fond of the book. Uh, what do we got some next week plans, guys? I know you're asking, what's the deal, Mike? Why do you keep putting off this Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy video? Hmm. Here's the thing. I just, I, I just kind of talked about it. those intros, guys. They take, they take a long time to make, and I just haven't gotten around to making it for that yet. And it's one of those things where I said, okay, you know what? I could just go ahead and do it without it. And then here's the thing. I don't I don't want to feel like I'm half-assing stuff. I would rather just, you know, put it off instead of half-assing it. I, I've always said I want to be, you know, quality over quantity on this channel. And it really, for something I, I, I'm so endeared to, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I'm definitely going to take my time with it. So the goal is to get it out this coming week. Uh, things look like they will calm down just a little bit. This was just a very, very busy week in real life. And that's why I decided to do Recursion last night instead of Hitchhiker's Guide because I knew it wouldn't take 
as long, obviously, with uh, with no introduction and stuff. But I, I, I want to do an intro for uh, for Hitchhiker's Guide because, uh, again, I like to do that for all my Why You Should Reads. I think it's the best selling point, much more than anything I have to say. You know, <laughs> The fact that I have people all the time watch those intros in the in the Why You Should Read videos and tell me that the intro wasn't even over and they were it was already in their Amazon basket. So uh, I want to make sure I, I give it the treatment that it deserves. So that's why the delay on Hitchhiker's Guide it's not anything I'm changing my mind about or I'm struggling with. It's just a matter of time and wanting to do it right. Uh, then I will have a review for Ender's Game, one of my favorite science fiction books of all time. Probably my second favorite science fiction book of all time. I love the book to death. I've never talked about it on the channel uh, because, I mean, let's be honest, it is a lightning rod for controversy. Uh, but, you know, I never let that dictate what I'm going to talk about on the channel. So I definitely want to talk about Ender's Game and why I love the book because that's what I talk about, guys, here. I talk about books. That's why I talk about here, guys. Not that I talk about guys here. Sometimes these things happen, guys. You just kind of kind of roll with it. But uh, yeah, Ender's Game, that's going to be happening next week. Uh, I'll be doing my off the books next week also to kind of wrap up Sci-Fi September. That's going to be my uh, my favorite science fiction movies of all time. Always a lot of fun on off the books to talk about a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of sci-fi movies, I think will be a great conversation to have because it's a much tougher list than you think because you start asking yourself well is that sci-fi is that not sci-fi you know you get into that thing everybody thinks sci-fi they think spaceships and lasers right uh not always the case like look at jurassic park would you consider that sci-fi yeah it is it's very much sci-fi so it's uh it's one of those things that i think it'll be an interesting video once i narrow it down because right now i'm like i'm not going to talk about that many movies uh, i got to narrow this down quite a bit now why you should read saga is probably going to slide you guys uh, I, 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 first of all, I don't want to have two Why You Should Reads in a week. Uh, I like to kind of, you know, put some distance between those. So that's going to be kind of the, the casualty of time and numbers this month. But I will be doing it in the future because I do know that there are people interested in Saga. And I obviously would love to talk about it. Again, like I said, I just I would rather take my time with these things, guys, than just kind of just slap something together. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when, when, when family members are sick and stuff, uh, you just you just don't have the extra time. To get stuff like that done. So, uh, yeah, victim of the numbers. And it's not going to be on my channel, guys, but you guys do know Chris Ferracchio, the author of the Sun Eater Saga. Uh, we had a podcast on my, my Talk About Nothing podcast that I do on the channel here. Well, I'm going to be a guest on his channel uh, Sunday afternoon, and he's calling it Talk About Everything because, you know, what else can we talk about? Well, we're going to find out. We talked about three hours last time, and this time, again, there's, there's no format, guys. We're just going to talk and see what happens. I'm sure Dune will probably come up more than once and probably some manga but um, uh yeah we're doing it live that's the thing guys it's like when we did our, our our one before look i didn't edit anything we did it live but i record i, I record it and posted after you know a couple days or something like that we're doing that live so if you want to see like some slip ups you might see them that's a good place to uh check out so make sure you subscribe to christopher's channel because um again i think there's a lot more there that you'll be interested in even if you haven't read sun year yet even though you should let's get in some movie talk guys there's some tv and movie we talk things to go to uh, i gotta talk about the dune movie of course i mean because everyone around the globe got it a month before i did and i just think that that's not fair uh, not everybody there are other places now look here's the thing it's open in all these smaller countries uh, smaller compared to u.s and china before you get upset that's not, i don't mean like they're they're small and insignificant it's mean that they just have smaller markets right and they had projected in its first weekend they projected it to pull in 20 million dollars it almost doubled that. I think it was 36 or 37 million. So that's very, very encouraging. And it's already got uh, some people excited. Think, oh shit, this might do better than we thought it was going to do. So fingers crossed, it's looking really good. And it looks like US and China are going to kind of make or break this. So guys, if you're here or if you're in China, please do your part. Go see Dune in the theater. Biggest screen you can find. Do it on IMAX if you can because I don't want you to have to face my Gom Jabbar because I will use it on you if we don't get a sequel because you guys just say, I'm just going to stay home and watch it on HBO Max. Do both. Watch in the theater. Come home that night and think it's so awesome. You want to watch it again. Then you can watch it on HBO Max. That's what I'm probably going to do. So uh, we've already got plans to get a sitter, me and my wife, to go see it on opening night in IMAX. Cannot wait, obviously. Uh, I'm encouraged by look, 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 guys, I'm going to be, uh, I don't know if it's just I'm feeling optimistic today or what. I feel like we're going to get the sequel no matter what happens. Uh, first, they know that they've kind of cut his legs off with this HBO Max thing. So they've said, if people watch this on HBO Max, we're going to justify giving you the money to make the sequel, right? And 
who isn't going to watch this on HBO Max? You know, I feel like everyone will be watching it that doesn't go see it in the theater. I mean, just out of curiosity, just out of hype alone, I feel like the buzz for the movie has been huge. So I feel like it's going to get watched. But the reason that I think we're going to get a sequel to this no matter what is even if they don't make a profit on it, this movie is going to get recognition by the Academy without a doubt. I think right now, go ahead and put it down. I think this is going, if it's not this one, it's going to be for part two. I think that this will be the one that gets Denny V his his best director Academy Award finally, and I just know that uh, what Legendary and Warner Brothers they're gonna they're gonna love that buzz that they're getting because I feel like they're gonna think okay even if this isn't making like huge money it's gonna have great legs it's gonna sell a lot uh, on home video on digital on demand on Blu-ray things like that and I just feel like they're gonna say you know what this is getting a lot of buzz a lot of award recognition. We're going to go ahead and green light the sequel no matter what. So maybe this will be something I look back at and laugh or cry, you know, whatever. But right now, I feel very, very positive we're going to get this sequel no matter what. And a lot of people ask me, well, is this a bad thing? Because it'll be like a two-year gap between this. That actually works out perfect, guys, because the gap in Dune... Well, Paul starts at 15, he ends about 18. That think that would be a great, great thing in hindsight. So uh, I'm very excited about what I've heard about the movie. Uh, I'm glad that I'm hearing that a lot of people that uh, you wouldn't consider the target audience for Dune are really, really liking it. Now, your MCU audience, maybe not as much as like just your 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 fan, your your film goers that just love film. Those are the people that are really really liking this. So, uh, no guys, I don't expect this to make MCU movie money. No one expects that, but I, I definitely think it can make some really really probably the best sci-fi money that you can make for something not named Star Wars. Does that make sense? So, uh, I, I'm excited. I, I wanted to do great, obviously, not just uh, for uh, my own personal benefit where I get a part two. But uh, I feel like Denny B deserves it. Uh, he really does. It seems like he's almost become like a cult director at this point because Blade Runner 2049 thought it was great, didn't make any money. Arrival, fantastic. It got Academy Award recognition. It wasn't like a huge hit at the box office. Prisoners, probably one of the least talked about movies. It, it's one of the most amazing movies I've ever seen. So I feel like this guy's almost like a cult director at this point. So I would love for him to have a bona fide hit on his resume because I feel like uh, he's a can't miss director for me and I just want him to keep making movies forever. Uh, you know, Rebecca Ferguson's in Dune. She's also going to be in this adaptation of Wool, the uh, the Hugh Howey books. Uh, Wool is being adapted on Apple TV. And I feel like it's the first of many things that Apple TV is tackling in the sci-fi department. Now, that's also going to have Rashida Jones and Tim Robbins in it. So Apple TV, while I've said I've criticized their streaming service because I feel like they don't have like they don't like like the library that you know you, they're getting crushed by HBO and Netflix because they don't have the library. They have like the original content and then all the stuff that you can pay extra for. It's like why am I paying a subscription a subscription service to pay extra for all these movies? But the thing, the thing is, is they are pouring tons of money into their original series. Just look at the production value of Foundation, which comes out today, by the way. That is just amazing looking. And apparently they want to go all in on the sci-fi. There's this other series called Invasion, where it's going to deal with alien invasion from the point of view of, of several different continents. While that's going on, it's got Sam Neill in it. Uh, they're doing an adaptation of Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Blake Crouch is actually writing it. Uh, they've actually got the rights to do Time Bandits. You remember the 80s movie Time Bandits? They're going to do that. Uh, they've already renewed uh, what, For All Mankind for Season 3. Uh, C by Jason Momoa. I think Season two's done. And I don't know about Raised by Wolves, but I'm just saying, look, look at how much they're dedicated to the sci-fi. It seems like all these all these streaming services are wanting the next Game of Thrones. So they're snatching up all the fantasy rights. And it looks like Apple's like, okay, we're just gonna try, we're just gonna dig our heels in on science fiction. Because let's be honest, people are kind of jaded with Star Wars right now. Star Trek is very, very divisive, and you know the old fans aren't really feeling it. You know, so uh, I feel like this is the time to pick up some new sci-fi series. And guys, I think a Foundation just looks phenomenal. I don't know if it's anything like the book at all. Like I said, I think even the showrunners are saying, "Yeah, we had to change a lot of stuff because the book is highly unadaptable in the way that it was." But uh, I'm excited to watch this series because it just looks magnificent. And that's one thing I can say about uh, uh, Lisey's story when I watched it on there is Apple TV, their production value is top notch. It's just superb. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that there's someone out there giving sci-fi the attention that it loves because we can't count on sci-fi channel anymore and the expanse goes off after this season so i'm going to need some new sci-fi series to dig my heels in on so i'm excited about what they're doing uh, i got to talk about what i joked about in the intro there and that is of course the recasting thing now i have noticed with wheel of time fans that if you have any negative opinions about this upcoming adaptation at all you are the enemy 
Now, I have liked all of the castings. I got accused of not liking any of the castings. I don't know where that came from. Uh, I, I mean, like everybody else, I was like, wow, that's not what I imagined when someone were first announced. But I said, Heath Ledger rule. Let's wait and see what they're like on screen before I judge them. And we got that first trailer. And I think everybody looks really great. The only one that I still on paper do not like is Min. And that is because she's older. And I do not think that that's going to, there's some things that happen in the series between our main main protagonist and Min. And I'm like, that's going to be kind of icky, icky <laughs> for lack of a better word. So that is my problem with that. But with this whole deal about Barney Harris being uh, recast, this is this is the guy who's playing Matt Cawthon in season one of the show, and it was reported he's dropped out. He's being replaced by Donald Finn, a character I don't know anything about. Now, look, Donald Finn could end up being great. Okay, I'm not trying to take away from that. Uh, it's just one of those things that, like, this is a bad look, guys, because uh, before the first season of your show is out one of your core components is is leaving the show now look it could be kinds of all kinds of things because of the because of the virus should not be named there's been all kinds of scheduling problems all that kind of stuff i don't know if he got in trouble i'm not here to speculate on all those things all i'm saying is the whole time that we're watching season one we're going to be thinking wow this guy's not gonna be here what if he's great if he's really really great in the role it's going to be a tough, tough pill to swallow. Now, not that I want him to be bad or anything. I'm just saying, and I've had several people that are, that are snapping at me saying, maybe this is for the better. I mean, look, everybody recast, even Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, uh, they recast Beric Dondarrion. They recast uh, Dario Naharis. Well, let me ask you guys a question. Besides like the really hardcore, did you guys even remember who Beric Dondarrion or, or Dario Naharis is? Exactly. Replacing Matt on Wheel of Time is like if Khaleesi had dropped off the show and they recast it. He is a main character in the series. It's a big, big deal. So regardless of if it ends up being a problem or not, I don't know. All I'm saying is, guys, quit freaking out. If someone's, if someone thinks, hey, wow, that's bad news. You know, that's a red flag. You know, quit jumping down their throat about it. You know, it's, it's okay to be concerned about it because look, in the end, all of us wheelies, yes, wheelies, we want the show to be great. It doesn't mean we don't. We are not going to stress about it. It doesn't mean that we want anything to fail. So I hope people will get back to relax, breathe, take it easy. I mean, I remember the Wheel of the Lord of the Rings community in 2000, before that first movie came out, and everyone was just anxious to see it. You know, we were just. It was like a party. No one was at each other's throats like they seemed to be with Wheel of Time. So uh, yeah, there were lots of production problems during that too. Lots of red flags, and it turned out great. Obviously, so obviously we want Wheel of Time to do the same thing. But I won't lie, this is very concerning. I I, I don't know what's going on. I hope we get some details, and it's not just rumors. There's a lot of ugly rumors going on right now. Did he get Me Too? Did he refuse the poke? Any of that stuff? Look. I'm not getting into all that stuff. I just hope that, uh, you know, I don't want to say I hope he has a diminished role in season one. I just, I'm kind of like, well, I hope he's just okay. <laughs> and Donald Finn, Finn act, it actually ends up being like great. So that's that's the best case scenario, I think. But uh, no matter what it is, um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. But uh, I don't know, guys. We shall see what happens. So, guys, that was my week. What are you guys up to? What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you playing? Drop in the comments and let me know, and I will talk to you there.